Hi everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to talk about service endpoint. So, before we understand what service endpoints are, we are going to discuss the overall concepts related to service endpoints. Okay. So, the first topic we are going to talk about is concepts. So, let's say you have an Azure environment. So, let's say this is an Azure environment. And in this Azure environment, you have a virtual network deployed. So let's say you have this virtual network deployed, which is your VNet, and it has this address space 10.1.0.0 forward slash 16. So you have around 65,536 IPs in this network. Now within this network, let's say you have a subnet. Okay. Now within this subnet, you have a virtual machine available to you. Okay. And the subnet range is 10.1.1.0 slash 54. So you have around 256 IPs assigned in the subnet. And out of those 256 IPs, the first IP available in Azure is signed to your VM. So you have 10.1.1.4. That is the IP assigned to your VM. Now, what you want to do, you want to connect this virtual machine with some pass offering from Microsoft. For example, you want to connect it to a storage account. So you can see you want to connect this VM from the left hand side to a storage account on the right hand side. This pass service can be SQL database. It can be any other Microsoft service as well. So once if you want to create this connection from this VM to the storage account, there are multiple ways you can do this. OK, so the easiest option or the by default option that you get with this is you are able to connect to the storage account over the Internet. So by default, that is how you are able to connect to the storage account. If you have any users connecting over the Internet, they are also able to connect to it using this. So let's say if I have some Internet users, they are also able to connect to the storage account and they talk to the private IP of the storage account and that's how they are able to access it. But now you're going to think since this Azure VM and this storage account are both part of Azure. Why not have a service which can basically connect this virtual machine? To this storage account over Microsoft Backbone. In order to accomplish this, we have a service in Azure called as service endpoint. So you have this service endpoint available. What the service endpoint does, it basically creates a connection for you. So it creates a connection from this VM to the storage account and you're able to connect to the storage account over the Microsoft backbone. So you're not transversing over the Internet. Which we were doing earlier, we don't do that now. So you're able to connect from this area to the other area by using this Microsoft backbone. OK. So that is the advantage you get with this solution. Now let's say uh, you have this configuration set up. Now what you want to do, you want to also connect from on-premises. So if you want to connect from on-premises, let's say you have this setup where you have some data center and you have some VM configured there and you want to connect from on-premises to the storage account. So what you can do is you can basically create a express out connection or a site to site connection from on premises. You have that connection established. Once you have that connection established, you can basically allow that IP, the public facing IP. In your subnet, so you go to your uh, in your uh, virtual net uh, in your storage account firewall and networking section. So you go to your storage account and in that storage account, you go to the networking section and you allow that IP over there. Once you allow that IP, it allows you to communicate with the storage account. So you're talking to or you're basically connecting over this NATed IP to this Azure service like a storage account or some other service as well. So this is the overall configuration on how you basically connect uh, from any Azure service which is deployed on a virtual network to a pass offering of Microsoft like a storage account, a SQL database, Cosmos DB, lot more services can be part of this. So essentially, just to recap, 
service endpoint helps you to connect to any past service of Microsoft and it helps you to establish those connections over Microsoft backbone. You're not transversing over the Internet in order to connect to those past services. Now you will ask me, so what are the different services that support service endpoint? So if you see on your screen, all of these services around 14 services support services endpoint as of now. This container registry service uh, currently is private is in private preview, but in future you will see that this will be generally available as well. So you can see Azure storage account supports service endpoints, SQL databases support service endpoint, Synapse Analytics supports service endpoints. We have other services like PostgreSQL. We have MySQL. We have Cosmos DB. Evolved service. Service bus queues and event hub and you can see all these services over here. Now you have all these services that support service endpoint and you can configure it when you're deploying your workloads. Now let's see some of the benefits that you get with this service. So when you configure service endpoint, it helps you to improve the overall security of your workloads. How does it improve the security? You're not going over the Internet. You're connecting from your virtual machines to a past service or over Microsoft backbone. You don't have to connect over the Internet. Plus the overall routing for you is properly configured. If you have like a network virtual appliance in your network, you can transfer all the traffic to that network virtual appliance and maybe connect that with network virtual appliance to this service endpoint. So it also helps you to optimize your routing and helps you to send all the traffic over Microsoft backbone. Plus it is really simple to set up. So I'll show you a demo after this. In that demo you will uh, see that this is a very simple service to set up uh, and it doesn't have a big management overhead. Now we have talked about all the good things about the service. Let's see some of the challenges or limits you have with this service. In terms of limits, this feature is only available to virtual network deployed through ARM templates or ARM deployment model. So if you use the classic model, this functionality will not be available to you. Endpoints are enabled on subnet configured in Azure virtual networks. Endpoints can't be used by traffic from your on premises to Azure. So it basically means if you have Azure virtual networks, you create a service endpoint from there to your storage account or some other service. But if you have some on premises network, you don't get that functionality by default that you can connect that network directly to this service. Although you can basically add it to the allowed list, uh, but you, you're not exactly configuring that network with this service. OK, and for certain services like Azure SQL database and Azure Data Lake service, generation watch service, this service endpoint has to be deployed in the same region where your virtual network is located. So if your virtual network is located in East US, you have to deploy the service in the same region as well. So we have all of these limits also there in this service. You can also see all the other limits in Microsoft documentation as well. Now talking about a demo, OK? So now we need to see this in action, how all of this service endpoint configuration works. So let's say we have a virtual network and the name of that virtual network is SCVNet1. Now this virtual network wants to connect to this storage account. So we have created a storage account and all these services are created in same region, but storage account endpoints can be created even if the storage account is in some other region. So it, it is not region dependent. Only the storage service is region independent, but some of the other services that you have are uh, dependent on the region. Your virtual network and your storage account or some other service should be in the same region in order for them to be connected to each other. Now you have a virtual network created inside this. I have two subnets configured. One of the subnets I have connected by using service endpoint. Whereas the other subnet I have not connected by using service endpoint. If you look closely, this is the range of this subnet and the other subnet has. Sorry, this is the virtual network range. This is your subnet one subnet two range and this is your subnet one range and we have two VMs deployed. One VM is called as VM SC01 
and the other one VM is called as VM NO SC02. Very creative names as you can see. So you have two VMs deployed in two different subnets uh, and they are assigned the first private IP assigned to these VMs. OK, now in order for you to see this, I'll just switch over to Azure portal. On the Azure portal, you'll see I have already created this resource group. Now within this resource group, what I have done, I've created these two VMs. And if I go to the virtual network, you see SC VNet1. This network address space is 10.8.0.0. Within this network, I have three subnets. So subnet one, subnet two, and subnet three. Subnet one and subnet two have two VMs. One VM is connected by using service endpoint to a storage account. The other subnet is not connected. Subnet one is connected by using service endpoint. How did I configure it? You go to service endpoints, you add a service endpoint, and you have the opportunity to select the service you want to connect to. So you can see all the services where you can connect to a service endpoint. I will select storage and over here I'm going to also select the policy. So this policy basically allows you to filter on what resources you can connect to. So if I want this network to only connect to a storage account, I can choose this policy over here. I have to create this policy beforehand and then I can select this policy over here. Now I can select the subnet that I want to associate this service endpoint with. So I can associate with subnet two or subnet three because I've already associated with subnet one. I can't associate with subnet one now. OK, so you can see I've already done this. I'm not going to add this subnet as well. You can see your subnet available over here. You can add your subnet and you can configure this connection over here. The other way or the other area you can configure this connection is you go to your resource group. You go to your storage account and within your storage account, you'll find a container service over here, right? And I can see I have already uploaded some files to my container. OK, so I have this file uploaded to my container and I have my storage account configured. Now going back to this. On my storage account, I see this area called networking area. In this networking area, what I have done, I have allowed access only from selected networks. OK, and in the selected network, I have selected VNet1 and subnet1. OK, so I've only selected subnet1, which will be able to connect to this uh, to this storage account. Now what I will do once I have done this, I'll go back to containers and I have also added my IP. So you see I have added my IP if I'm connecting from on premises. So if you see the diagram again, if I'm connecting from on premises, I can also add that range or single IPs which will be able to connect to this storage account. So I can also do that. For our configuration, I've just added my private my IP address over here. Now once you've done this, you can go to the containers and if I go to container one. I can basically go to this blob and if I copy this blob. And if I go to VM one, this is my VM one. So what I've done, I went back to this VM. I basically created a RDP connection to VM1, connect an RDP connection. Similarly, I did this for the other VM as well, where no service endpoint is configured. This is part of subnet two. You can see this is part of subnet two. The other VM is part of subnet one. See this, this is part of subnet one. So I've configured both the VMs and I've connected to those VMs. If I go to VM1 and if I paste this value over here, you can see I'm able to see this image from this VM. But if I go to the other VM where no service endpoint is configured, my access to this image should not be allowed. So if I paste it over here on VM2, you can see my access is blocked. So if I see side by side, on VM1, you can see that VM1 SC, my access is allowed. And on the other VM, my access is not allowed. So when you configure service endpoint, you are able to connect to these endpoints from this picture. Okay. So that's all about service endpoint. We'll see you in the next video.